What up, what up, what up, it's your boy Mr. Vaughn. Mr. Vaughn, shout out Sweatbox, we back, we live, we active here on the channel, yes indeed. Let's talk about Rick and Morty, Season 5, Episode 7, Gotron, Jerry Sick, Rick, Jerry Sis, Rick Vangelion. <laughs> Rick Vangelion, whatever. They be so out of control with these titles, man. So out of control with these titles. I literally be able to practice it before I turn this camera on so I can try to read it right and I still be fucking up. <clears throat> but we're here, still dodging those digital jabs to talk about it, baby, to talk about this episode of Rick and Morty, which basically just slandered my childhood to death by by besmirching the beautiful name of Voltron and and, and, and so many, so many large robot shows of the same vein, whether it be Gundam Wing, Robotech, or even the very, very, very copyish Probably Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which was like a live-action Voltron spin-off, rip-off. I always thought that. That's why I was never really a fan of the Power Rangers. I was like, this is the wackiest episode of Voltron I ever saw when I saw Power Rangers. That's what I thought. And I watched Power Rangers, very really. The first couple seasons, you know what I'm saying, all the way up. Really forget it. We ain't gonna get into that. Let's talk about Rick and Morty, which is not whack, which is the best thing on TV right now. So fucking hilarious. This episode starts with Rick, Jerry, and Summer, or excuse me, with Rick, Morty, and Summer on their way to Boob World when <laughs> they get detoured because Rick finds the blue, the blue Gotron ferret. <laughs> See, they can't do lions, so they're ferrets. <laughs> oh, and it just goes downhill from there. They slandered my cartoon in every way possible. <laughs> and I love, it. again, spoiler alert, and I'm not going in order. And I love how every all of the monsters we find out in the <laughs> this was one of the funniest post credit scenes ever because we find out in the monster dimension that the monsters is like look nobody not a single soul has ever returned from the portal <laughs> but we gotta keep trying because we're trying to give them the cure for AIDS <laughs> oh he's like maybe we should just talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm not gonna have I'm gonna have my clothes on, I'm not gonna be naked, right? He gets there, they go through the portal, and a, clearly apparently the monsters are not trying to smash or kill nothing, they're just trying to give us the cure for AIDS. And it's so hilarious because when the when the family forms Gotron for the first time, first of all, when they all get the lions and they all go through the thing, I was like, bruh, you guys is totally ripping off of Ultron. When they was in the shots, <laughs> it was so bad. It was so bad. See, and I got to check my man over at New Rockstars because he kept saying that was more of a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. No, it was all Voltron. From them going through the underground to the... It was, first of all, <laughs> why was Morty's Gotron ferret in a parking garage? <laughs> the fact that Morty's Gotron ferret was in a parking garage while everybody else was, was underwater in a volcano out in the desert... <laughs> Under a waterfall, Morty's was in a parking garage. <laughs> there was one time when there was multiple, and he couldn't reach the ticket, and there was another ferret behind him. Like, come on, bro, we gotta go, man. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. It was so hilarious. But yeah, new rock stars. This definitely, while there were some subtle references to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, all of this was mostly straight Voltron. It was mostly just straight Voltron. So, new rock stars, I'm checking y'all on this one, cuz, get it right. You guys got a lot of people that watch y'all. Y'all gotta get it right. Just like in the scene when, uh, what is it, the angry Rick of the five families, and he leaves and they blow up his Gotron ferret, that's from, this is the movie that y'all ain't gonna know, cuz this is a deep cut. That's from Dick Tracy. If you remember in Dick Tracy, there's a scene where uh, Al Pacino's character, uh, I don't remember his name, it was like something, but anyway, Al Pacino's character was trying to gather all the mobsters together, and one mobster was like, no, and he leaves, and, and Al Pacino's like, let him leave, let him leave, and then they go to the window and they watch, his whole car blows up when he gets into it, so again, new rock stars, that's where that came from, that came from Dick Tracy, yeah, Ugh. with Warren Beatty, 
and Al Pacino in the in the early '90s, late '80s. It's an underrated movie, a very underrated movie. Go watch it if you ain't seen it. But back to Rick and Morty. The references was so was just so great. And then, like you said, there was the scene. <laughs> the references when they tie. First of all, I'll leave it to Rick and Morty to tie in Voltron to mob movies. Just two of my favorite things ever. It was great. All the subtle references. And I will give you that. The the angry the angry um, Morty the angry Rick was definitely a play on Sonny's character from from The Godfather because he was a hothead. He was a super hothead. So that was that was great. I love that. Even though Sonny was an underboss and he wasn't actually a boss, he was acting boss once Don Corleone, Don Vito got shot. But I let it slide. We doing good. You know, I'm sitting there. Don't make this. I love new rock stars, so I'm not slandering new rock stars, but I'm just trying to make sure that they, they're factual with their things because a lot of people watch them. But this was a, a, just, the Rick and Morty episode. The, 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 the crossover between Voltron and Mob movies was so great. Another reference that I loved was. <laughs> <laughs> when they was about to kick Morty out the family because he, because he messed up on the security gig, <laughs> and Beth threw him sixteen thousand dollars. He was like, "Now nah, I got to turn my back on you." I was like, "Oh, you guys are killing it! You're crushing it!" It was great. It was hilarious, and I, <laughs> and I love all the voiceover work. Every time Summer, <laughs> every time Summer was doing a voiceover, Morty was like, "What?" Can you hear me? How, why are you talking over my voiceovers? Can you hear me? And she was like, "No, man, I can My summer can't, but my voiceover can." And then to come to find out, they were they were little parasite aliens called uh, what's a voiceovertrons or something like that. <laughs> he pulled them out their ear. It was just like it reminded me of the joints from the Matrix for real. That shit was hilarious. Or from Wrath of Khan when they would put the little um, the little worms were crawling inside your ear from Wrath of Khan. It was a mixture of both of those. It was a mixture of the Matrix, Wrath of Khan, worms. So yeah, that was trippy. I like that. That was great. Um, man, it was <laughs> this episode. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, that's a lot, man. It was all the Voltron reference. The uh, the the forming of the Voltrons on top of the <laughs> the Gotrons make the Gotrons make the Gotrons. <laughs> and I love when they got when <laughs> Summer was really feeling herself when she fired <laughs> when she fired Beth and Jerry. And they came home, and Jerry was like, let's have her whacked. <laughs> and Jerry was like, ooh, better yet, let's kill ourselves and wait by the door in hell for when she comes in. <laughs> I was like, Jerry, really, bro? Jerry went dark with it, fam. <laughs> and then at the beginning, when they went on the first mission, and Jerry didn't want to go, and Jerry or Beth didn't want to go. <laughs> Summer was gangster in this episode. Summer was like, oh. Your family's trying to ask you for an adventure? Isn't this what you wanted, Mom? And Beth was like, yeah, until we created a giant incest baby. She said, oh, boo-hoo, we created an incest baby. You might be a clone. You wanted me aborted when I was born. We get the family we get. I was like, damn, Summer Savage, boy. <laughs> and the fact that they brought back the incest baby, oh, my God, this show has no boundaries. Why they named the incest baby Naruto, bro? <laughs> Oh, I hated it. I hated it. And I hated that the anime characters <laughs> kidnapped Morty and tried to get him to snitch on the family so they could infiltrate and get their Gotrons back. <laughs> and then they ended up getting it anyway because Rick's an idiot. And he decides to hire her as an intern. <laughs> she was sitting in the corner. She was all fucked up from the car accident when Morty fucked up. <laughs> this episode was great, man. Rick and Morty continues to just be the best thing going. The best thing going. If you ain't know, now you know. So another great episode of Rick and Morty, man. Uh, make sure you keep it locked here on the channel. I know I'm forgetting stuff, but I, like I already told you, the post credit scene was the funniest ever. They just wanted, to, they just trying to give you the cure for AIDS, man. Oh, this is one more thing, dude. The montage of them killing all the monsters, bro. When he was curb checking, the, he curb checked one of them on the other. On the on the dam, he already had the graves dug and he shot one in the grave, bro, just mob style. And then they put the cement shoes on the cinnamon. And it was like a hundred. I was dying. I was cracking up, fam. This show does too much, man. They just do too much, and it always be funny, man. You mix Voltron with mob movies. Bravo, my friend. Bravo. <laughs> All right, man. I think that's everything. I'm sure I've missed some stuff, but. It was too funny, man. Until next time.
you know how we do. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We seven episodes. We only got three left, man. Until next time, you know how we do. Peace. I'm a girl. Right, to the ends with you. I'm a girl. To the end with you. I'm a girl.